Simba and Mufasa take Hollywood, Hurt Bay breaks the internet, and we have actor Melvin Jackson Jr. in the hot seat. All this and more coming up next. You are tuned in to Black Hollywood Live next. Oh, this was only fitting for our show tonight. I mean, we're going to slow it down. Take it. You got to take it away. This is your pick. Yeah. I can't sing? Yes, you can. That's not possible. Hey. Okay. Tell me, can I don't know you have the storm? Go ahead, Raylan. Get it. Because I need somebody who will stand by me. Oh, yeah. He's <laughs> over yeah. I'm waiting for the spot that I know. It's okay. We call Raylan musically. Lou James, where you at, Lou James? I know. I mean, we Where's Khalil? <laughs> Khalil, I know. Yeah. We miss you, Khalil. I'm the musically challenged one. Like every time we learn about a new song, it's it's like news to me. It's okay. <laughs> it's but it's okay. But I knew about New Edition. Trust yeah. me. I okay. Did. That's 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 all that matters. That's all that matters. What's up, guys? Ooh. Welcome to f another Thursday night special with your rays of sunshine uh -huh. here. <laughs> I'm your I host, like that. <laughs> Raina Ale, and you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Raina underscore Ale, and my lovely co-host. I am Raylan T. You can find me every we're at Raylan Taren on Instagram and Twitter, and we have a very special guest here, Melvin, Melvin. Jackson Jr. Hey. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yes. Uh, tell everyone yeah, where, where we can where find, can we you, find you, on you. You can find media. me at Melvin Jackson Jr. Everything, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. It's the brand, Melvin Jackson Ooh, Jr. It's the brand. It's the brand. 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 Oh, brand oh, yourself, like like Pepsi and Coca Cola. It's a brand. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Guys, remember to follow All Things Black Hollywood Live at BHL Online on Instagram and Twitter. Remember to like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and comment. We love to talk to you guys, so make sure you spread the word. Melvin, welcome to the show. Thank yes. you for me. <laughs> So let's just go ahead and go right into it. I, you guys have probably seen Melvin recently on the new edition star. He played the infamous Curtis Blow, uh, which was I'm amazing. Curtis Blow, and I yeah, want you to know that these are the brains. Hey. Oh, bring it up, bring it up, bring hey. it up. Hey. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> what was it like playing Curtis Blow? It was amazing. Um, one, it was kind of like I had to make, keep pinching myself to like, is this really happening? And my end, the new edition movie that was one of my favorite groups of all times and then I'm playing the legendary Curtis Blow like it was just like you get two and one you like you get that apple pie and you get ice cream on top I was like <laughs> yes yes so I'm just definitely blessed and honored to be a part of the project and man these those guys the the groups they did the amazing job the the young kids to the to the to young guys Everybody killed it in the movie. My favorite line was like when the young new edition was like oh Curtis Blow like we love you who y'all supposed to be? Exactly. Nation of Islam. So I was like, damn. Yeah, I crushed it. I was they like, man. Crushed the dreams of a young new edition. People it's okay. were mad at me. They like, man, you did that, but why you had to be so mean to the kids? I said, that's acting. You didn't. You couldn't see me in that moment. That was just. I was being the character. That was being the character. That's all about yeah. acting. Yeah. Because yeah. Melvin loved the kids. Yeah. Melvin loved the kids. <laughs> <laughs> so talk about your success after the new edition movie. I mean, it's been all over the media since mm. it came out. Yeah. I mean, it was the, great. So many views. It was just a great movie. How about how was your success after that? It's 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 funny because a lot of people that don't know me don't recognize me from it. Some will, but some most don't because they like, man, you went because I was had the you know the the hair, yeah. the wig, and so they was like. One person, I was like, I was, I played Curtis Blow. Like, no, you didn't. And I'm like, oh yeah, you did. Like, they, cause yeah. they, they didn't know. So it's one of those things. It's like people not really recognizing me that don't know me. And then some people that do know me didn't know that was me. And I was like, you know me for years, and you didn't know that was me. So it's, it's, it's been interesting though. But the love has been great, and I'm um, just honored to be a part of it. And 29 million viewers and, and That's more. Like we awesome. just showed it again, the hair marathon. So. It, it definitely broke expectation, and I'm glad because people needed to tell the, the story needed to be told, and I'm glad that people came to and watched it and, and heard about it. Where it's like, okay, I gotta watch it now mm -hmm. because you're like the last person on earth that haven't seen it. So, because um, I know that BT recently or not recently, but they've been trying to have new shows right. and you know mm -hmm. um, get people to watch and view BT because after I feel 106 and Park went mm -hmm. off, you know yeah. they lost a lot of viewers. Yeah. Do you think that BT should maybe have this as their brand doing biopics of like big you know uh groups or musicians in the black community i think so i think it's definitely they I mean they they 
came to it. I mean, they really put put in the work and they put the money behind it. And a lot of people were falling, like I said, falling off of BET. They like, well, mm-hmm. I'm just done with BET. But when they saw this, they like, you know, I'm a fan yeah. again because they did it right. And I, you know, Jesse Collins, you definitely have to take my hats off to him because oh, he was yes. the one who spearheaded the whole the whole thing. Like back in 05, saying let's do this, and then it went to different, you know, other studios, and then it came back in yeah. BET. Like let's do this, let's make this happen, let's and let's do what we have to do. So I think the show like. BET is on another level now. They're not, yes. you know, oh, oh BET is like, BT like, oh, BT, but no, it's like, BET did it right, and the numbers show that mm-hmm. people across America supported it, and now they're doing, like, uh, Nas biopic, they turned yes, it into a turn yeah. series, and I just think it's going to open up more doors. I think Run DMC's biopic should be mm-hmm. told, as well as Curtis Blow, LL Cool J, so many other people. Yeah. I, think I was Joe, even thinking Boys to Men yeah, after Boys seeing Men, yeah, how yeah, they, you one. know, got right. their start yes. from the new edition movie, so... Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you who, who needs to stop doing biopics. Lifetime. Yeah, I think we need to just... <laughs> Lifetime, hand the torch over to BET. Just oh. like, Please, just let you know, them pass handle the baton, it. Like, wow. Oh, I'm sorry. But the, the <laughs> recent one was Britney Spears. It was not very it wasn't, good. It, no. Britney didn't want to... This, when Britney no. didn't want that to happen. It was unauthorized. So it was, yeah. it was bad? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Just, well... Just Google it and you'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so crazy. Like even though I heard the, I mean the Leah movie was was bad, but people watched we watched it just to see what was happening mm-hmm. in the first couple of minutes. But it was like it was interesting. Like you you want to take somebody's work and you want to make sure that you praise it and make sure that it's done right. And Definitely. I think that when you're in the business to do it right, then it'll, it'll show. Because if you if you have seen it where you have you it's a a train wreck where it hasn't hasn't happened um, in a sense of things haven't been done the right way, right. then you should just kind of stop and mm-hmm. reassess how you're going to do it and so that you don't make that name like, okay, we won't do Lifetime uh, <laughs> as bi- for biopics anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's important because you're working with directly with the talent. If right. they unauthorize you to do a biopic, how yeah. are you going to portray that person? Yes. Like, right. like can you, you use that when you can use the music? Exactly. Be, so, yeah. Like when you, you had to listen to Curtis, well, you had him to be there to show you how right. he was. <laughs> The new edition guys, like same thing. They right. were all matched up. So and how was that too? By the way, working or being with Curtis Blow, did he what pointers or anything? Well, the did thing, yeah, the, the thing um, is that um, I didn't get a chance to, to work with him before the movie. Like I kind of just had to go off of like videos and and, and interviews and stuff like that. And then mm-hmm. afterwards, I got a chance to talk to him afterwards. But it was just still like I just kind of had to. I, once they put me in the hair and makeup, like I embodied him. It wasn't like mm-hmm. I had to act like him. It was like I put me in the hair and makeup. And the the sideburns and the outfit, and it was like everybody called me Curtis Blow, and that's what I was. That's who I was, mm. and that was just a beautiful thing. Like with Ricky Bell and Michael Bivins was like, "What's up, Curtis Blow?" That's this what they knew me as because I didn't want to be seen as Melvin Jackson Jr. in that moment. Like wow. just see me as a character that I'm playing, so that you can really believe it, that it's um, that I'm that person. So I believed it. I know. So <laughs> let's let's start with your, your your love for acting, how it all started. Yes. So you yes. went to Bowie State University. Yes. You from originally from DC. DC. I'm sure everybody Yay. in DC is proud of yes. you to see you doing your thing. <laughs> you moved to the West Coast, the best yeah. coast. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I read that your your first role was to play a criminal for um, America's Most Wanted. Yeah. Well, Ooh. actually, that was that was my first TV role. First TV role. My yes. first role was a PSA, uh, which is a public service announcement. And I think it was like about underage drinking, mm-hmm. and that was the first role I've ever booked as an actor and that was a pay pay gig which as actors we know that sometimes it's not always a blessing your first job is not always a paying gig mm. but that was where I fell in love with acting because it's like you know this is something I could do for a living and so when I you know definitely booked the TV role it was like man and so I had to tell people like, listen I'm not a criminal on, <laughs> on America's One Wanted I was the person being bitten I was the victim Okay. So, because um, people were like, I saw you on there. Wait a minute, you know, people, people were actually. <laughs> I, was like, I saw you on America's Most Wanted. <laughs> it was crazy. Cause people were actually getting arrested, being mistaken for the person they played, and oh. so it's just I'm glad I didn't play the criminal. But it was definitely a great experience to be on Fox and to to be on TV. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Um, so I also read that at one point in your life. You went after a role, you quit your day job, went after a role, followed your dreams, and then unfortunately the role didn't happen. Right. So at what point, I mean, we're all in the industry right now. We want to follow our dreams. We want to go after it. Where do you find that balance of following your dreams but also being smart? Yeah, I mean, it's, and that was an interesting. It's like you you sometimes don't get the opportunities that, like, far as that was a situation where it's like you saw the money, they asked me to be a writer and then a producer, and then I also I was acting, writing, and producing on the show. So it's like I got what well, is going to get three checks, and how many times you get offered where well, you're going to get three checks? And unfortunately, it didn't work out. The person ended up being a fraud. And so it's like when you have to take that chance, you don't want to gamble on your, on your livelihood okay. because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you're su- surviving. This is our art, it's our craft, whether we're getting paid or not, we still should love it. And so we have to just be smart about it and say, okay, 
um, if I am going to leave a job, like, am I prepared to, to live off of whatever I saved for months or six months? Or, and do I have a backup plan mm. if this doesn't work out? And so I think the thing is just planning ahead of time to where it's like, okay, if I do leave this job, I still need to make sure I have another job to where I can, you know, will, will meet the needs that I need financially. And it's just about being smart. Sometimes the decision has to be made like that. Mm-hmm. Mm. So you really have to, for me, is now it's not to pray and meditate on every decision because it's like we think, react so quickly, and now we're having to pay for it years later, and it's like you don't want to be in that position. Definitely does. Yep, that's awesome because, like I said, most actors, well, people, I guess, when they come to L.A., they think Hollywood, they think they're instantly going to get a job, mm-hmm. whether it's in hosting, <laughs> whether it's in acting, modeling, it's Hollywood, you're right. going to get it. So I think that's really awesome that you went through this and you're still, you know, kind of having something on the side right. to keep that consistent income flowing. And it was the, the unfortunate thing was that I, I experienced it so far in my career. Like, I would have thought, like, something like that would have happened ahead of t- like like early in my career but mm-hmm. it happened three years ago and so it was one of those things is that even no matter how long you've been in this business sometimes we do get eager and a lot of things didn't look the way it should have looked and I should have knew better so with me being so eager because it came so easily mm. it was like oh okay where it was just like for me it, things don't come easy and so everything I've had was I earned it I earned that too but it was just like it just happened so fast. Like, okay, come to audition. Oh, you got the part. Oh, it just, it wasn't the normal casting process. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, okay, this is how much you want. Okay, cool. And mm-hmm. it was just so easy. And it was just like, sometimes we get comfortable with it being easy mm-hmm. and we fall into like, oh, let me get this because it's easy. Because, you know, everything else has been hard. Let me get, right. and yeah. it was just like, I was looking at being able to take care of my family and doing other things and, it just didn't work out. What kept you going or <clears throat> kept the motivation to still act even when you did hit those, you know, hard times? Uh, prayer, friends. Because mm. um, it was hard because it's like, you know, I went to a point where I was like, I didn't know how I was going to pay my rent. Like, I was paying my rent on credit cards and, mm. you know, getting loans in order to pay a loan. So it was just like, these are the things that as actors and entertainers that we don't talk about, like going through these trials and tribulations. But I feel like I want to help people and I don't want to keep... What I went through to my to myself because it's great when we're you see lights camera action and you see it on TV and everything, but there also other is this other side of it. We're human. Mm-hmm. We make mistakes. We go through situations, and just because I've been on TV don't mean I can't be homeless tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like you have to make sure that you prepare yourself for life and not try to put on this facade like, oh, I'm all well. Let me get this made back. Let me get this chain. And it's like we as African Americans we show our money, mm-hmm. and we have to learn how to invest our money and save our money. And not just continue to suspend it to where we don't have anything when it's when nothing to show yeah. for. It. Yeah, exactly. That's the grind That's and the hustle that actors and entertainers have to go through. I mean, some some people think oh, athletes <laughs> go through this; they got to practice, they got to go through right. this. But actors and, and and entertainers they go through the same thing. And then I'm learning more and more about that as I sit down with actors like yourself. Right. Um, Talk about current projects right now, and, uh, and specifically the Puff Daddy project. Oh, well, I've been campaigning to play Puffy. They're doing a. Um, a Biggie, a Tupac and Biggie uh, crime drama, and um, definitely been campaigning to, to portray him. This is somebody that, you know, when I got into the music business as a manager, like I emulated him. So I didn't have, I don't feel like I have to portray, <coughs> perpetrate to play him. Like I'm already, I, I took on just his style of business as far as his hustle mentality. Like I took on that as a, as a youngster. And so people looked at, called me a young puffy, you know, young puff daddy. So it was not, I feel like this is a role I prepared for my whole life. Mm. So that, you know, if it's God's intention for me to have this role, which I hope so, um, mm-hmm. I definitely would do it justice. And I think that people get the chance to see me play Curtis Blow. Like now they're, they're, belie- they're, they're believers of that I can play, you know, cor- uh, like I'm playing corrupt as well, but also, you know, puffy. So, if it's meant to happen, it'll happen, and I definitely think that it'll... I know it'll be a great project, and um, I definitely want to do them justice. Corrupt. Yeah. I could, now that you said it, I was yeah. like, dang. They're like, you can play everybody. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, no. I'm like, okay. Give us, give us your puff, uh, puff Daddy impression right oh, now. Please. Oh, please. Putting daddy. you on the spot right uh, now. <laughs> sleep is forbidden. While you, out this, while you sleeping, they out here working. We making money. Take that, take that. You know, it's bad boy for life, baby. <laughs> I just need him to tell me to go get a cheesecake. Remember that? Go get a cheesecake. Go go walk and give me a cheesecake. (laughs) Make it the band day, okay? Oh, my gosh. Make it the band. What was your favorite? I think what is one, when we're talking about Puff Daddy, what is one thing that you admire about him the most? Is that um, that when he lost his job at, um, 
that Uptown Records that he he sat in his room and he in in a house he said he had a house that he didn't know how he was gonna afford he uh, just bought a house he couldn't afford and he was like what am I gonna do now what am I gonna do now because it was at a point to where his mouth got him in trouble. He wanted to be the boss. Mm-hmm. And it was like, what am I going to do now? And it's like, am I going to sit and I'm going to complain about it, mope about it? Or am I going to get up and, and make some things happen? And so with him, you know, being the person that he is, he had people that believed in him, like Clive Davis, that I, I, I want to, I'm almost quote me, but I believe that Clive Davis was the one that helped him, you know, fund Bad Boy. So, you know, being a person that just didn't give up and you didn't take no for an answer, like that's what I like about him is that he's a go-getter and he didn't just make his money by just, you know, sleeping. He he actually only sleeps four to five hours, and he gets the job done. He works. He's horse. He's promoting Ciroc. He's promoting um, his tequila line. Like, he's just a hustler. Yeah. And there's no one that I, I see that's out hustling him right now. And that's what it is. It's like people say will say I'm one of the hardest working men in the show business. You know, there's other people like Kevin Hart and other people, but it's just like those are the people that constantly, you constantly have to work. So even when you don't see them, they're working. And yes. that's for me. It's like... I want to constantly be working, even when you don't see me. Mm-hmm. And the thing is not just being busy doing something, but busy, you know, busy doing nothing, but busy doing something mm. to make a difference um, for my life and other people's lives. That's like that Drake song. Um, <laughs> Which one? You never see me out, I'm always working. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Raina. I'm musically challenged, Raina, but I know that. Today. <laughs> All right, f- favorite flavor of Ciroc? Oh, yes. Um... I'm not really a drinker, but what I do like, I, I like the the apple and mm. the the green apple and it's another one. Is it the, the cherry? Red berry. They got red berry. Red berry. They do have cherry I, yeah, though. I know me do think. cherry. Didn't like, they have I'll, a new I'll, I'll get a, I'll get, I'll get a, a bottle of Ciroc and it'll sit in my house for like a, like I'll sip it and I'll, it'll be in my house for a year. I'm like, <laughs> what are you doing? Like so people come over drink. Hey man, get some Ciroc because I, I it's just it'll be here I, for a while. Right, I'm not a, I'm not a drinker, <laughs> but you know I'll. Every now and then. But. Yeah, definitely. What do you do for fun outside of, or, yes, outside of acting? you don't drink. What I do for fun, <laughs> um, I haven't done this in a while, but I like to play video games. Um, What's your favorite Madden video? 2K? To NBA 2K. Okay. Um, but I'll play, like, some Phase 10, or I'll play Scrabble. Scrabble's my thing. I'm, really? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like I'm a, in, my, in my house, I was the king of Scrabble, so my mom, she was like, she, yeah, she, she wasn't too happy. You know, there's like Scrabble like, tournaments, right? Like real life. That's a real uh, life thing. Would you ever get submitted into that? I might, you know, because some people know they also they know some words that I don't I know. know. I'm, I'm like, like, I'm I'm like is that a word? You know. I'm, I'm like, like is that a word? Like, I, you got to study yeah. dictionary with them. If I do that, I got to study dictionary. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I think you should totally do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do it. Um, before we go into our topics, uh, talk about your comedic background. Yeah, um, so you're pretty I, funny. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I was. I started doing comedy. I want to say four years, four about four years ago. And you know, I, I have friends who's comedi- who are comedians, and so I always been around it. And I was like, oh, maybe one day. But I didn't think I was funny. But I just always watched Eddie Murphy Raw, Delirious. Oh. That was my Delirious is my favorite Eddie Murphy uh, stand up. And so I was like, one day I'm gonna do it. So one day I decided to do it. I was scared. I, I was scared, man. I, my, my heart was beating <laughs> out my chest, and I almost ran out the out the building because it was, I was like, they, I, they call my name. I'm gonna run. I'm Where like, was me. this? In LA or in yeah, this, is, this was in Sherman Oaks. This is here. Out, oh, out here. Oh, shoot. Okay. And um, it was an open mic, and I was like, oh. man, I was nervous. I went up there and I did about almost ten minutes my first time. Wow. And from that, I was like, cool. And it's still a lot of learning, style of process to go through because you have your good shows and bad shows. And so I definitely, you know, have a lot of um, learning to do as a student of the game. And they say you're not really a real comedian until, like, your seven or eight year, maybe. in in doing it, and you still, it's still, like, 13, when it's like, okay, now you're a bona fide comedian. So I, I have used that to better myself as an actor, so on the comedic side. So I s- s- would say I'm a, more, I'm a comedic actor, mm-hmm. more than a comedian. Gotcha. Um, but I'm definitely working to that. But like Ron G is definitely a good friend of mine and you know mentor and you know Alex Thomas like those guys that you know will give me the opportunity. Like I opened up for Michael Collier and I bombed, and he was like, "What happened?" I was like, "I don't know, <laughs> I don't know." So it was just like, and that was in Maverick Flack, and you know, you know, Crenshaw don't play. Oh, so you got to be funny. Dang. I've never been there, but yeah, I, yeah that's you better be funny. Like tough. A tough crowd. Yeah. Tough crowd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we'll make sure to keep up with you. Uh, where are you going to post your new, uh, all of your upcoming events? Is it on your website? Yeah, on my on my Instagram, Facebook, and I also am finishing up a faith based film called The Price of Fame, and it's a Christian based film about the industry. Oh, wow. um, the pri- you know, sometimes you'll you'll 
compromise your faith and for fame and fortune is all about talking about the casting couch and just everything that people talk about and it goes on in the industry without giving too much away. Mm. Mm. I'm excited for that. that yeah, I'm really looking forward good. to that. That sounds interesting. <laughs> we don't have a lot of like, you know, a lot of different topics in movies. It's like the same oh, thing. Right. I'm like, is Hollywood running out of ideas? No. Um, so, yeah, yes. I'll be looking out for that. <laughs> but this next idea I think is going is a really good one. Do you like Disney movies? Yeah. So Donald Glover is actually going to be playing Simba yes. in the New Lion King I love, reboot. Uh, I love it in Lion King. Like, oh right? Um, it was interesting. Cool, he came. <laughs> at, James, James Earl Jones. He'll play. He'll have his role as Mufasa. Oh, um, it's sh- the release date hasn't come out yet. So it's gonna be a, like a cartoon movie. Yes, oh, cartoon wow. movie. He's gonna play Simba's voice. Wow. So oh, and then. Um, did he, did he sing? I thought he that was rap. my question to you. How do you think he'll sound I, when he pl- sings a Hakuna I, Matata? I like that song "Red Bone" by uh, Childish Gambino. So he's, he's, a, he's, he's a singer too. too. Oh, he's a singer, okay. actor. I know. I know. I know. He, I know he he rap, but yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Singer, actor, rapper. I think he's gonna kill. Yeah. He's gonna do he, How do you think he's gonna sound singing Hakuna Matata? Do you think he's gonna have a little swag it's to it? Like, it's no, it's because it wasn't. Because oh, because uh, what's what? his name from? Um, was it Jason Weaver or was it um, the the guy from uh, a Home Improvement that was Simba the first time? Um, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh my god. god. I, I was like, playing games with that. She's on She, she, she knows Drake lyrics and actors' names. You know? be so proud of me having it's that Drake. It's weird though because in Hakuna Matata, it, for, for, I don't know, I might be wrong, but I thought Simba was a li- he t- he was young and then he grows into, you know what right. I mean? Yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe he might not even He's be so talented. Adult Simba was Matthew there uh, we go. But Jonathan Taylor Thomas did do like young, young yeah, Simba. Yeah, 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 young Simba. But see, they, that's right. I'm glad they get James Earl Jones because nobody else can do Simba. No. you disobeyed me. Oh yes, <laughs> nobody can do him. Yeah. I wonder who who the rest of the cast. We haven't released the rest of the cast members. I, I can't who's wait. Gonna play Nala and who's gonna I know play? New Day from the WWE wants to be the hyenas. Ooh. <laughs> 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 if you could pick a Disney movie. To play in, which Disney movie would it be? It can't be Lion King because clearly it's here. <laughs> but what Disney, Disney movie would you be movie. in? Mm. Not the oh Mer- mermaid, um, because I like the crab. I like the, the little the mermaid. Cra- <laughs> the crab. <laughs> Sebastian. That was not what I was thinking. What was the crab? Was the crab Sebastian? Sebastian? Yeah, it was Sebastian. Because, you know, I, I had to think off the top. Because I'm like, you got me thinking Disney movies. I'm like, you know, there's uh, Beauty and the Beast with Disney, right? Yes. yes. Beauty and the Beast um, came out. There it's, was it's, one. it's coming out. Yeah. You should give me like a multiple choice. You couldn't give me... Uh, no, but okay. any Disney movie that I you just think of. Sebastian. Sebastian okay. was like... Under the, you, sea, you, under the yeah. sea. Under the sea. Yeah. <laughs> under the sea. Under the sea. Easy for me. And I was like, come on, give us a little Sebastian. Mario. Oh, what you about know, you, Rayla? Really? What do you think you would be? Oh, Disney movie. Put me as Princess Tiana. Oh my God! Put me as Princess Tiana. Tiana. Put me as Princess Tiana. I'll be Princess Tiana. And I'll we, do that. If we're, if we're the Princess Tiana, or Princess and the Frog cast coming out right now, you're Princess Tiana, obviously. Who would he be? Prince. <sighs> What other? No, the prince was like foreign. He was like, yeah, he was a little. Oh, he was a little. I was going for that. That's the only thing that's left. That's why I miss it. Okay. I, uh, of course, my Disney movie is Moana. Hello. Oh, no. She's a Moana obsessed. <laughs> obsessed. Have you um, seen that, that recent? I heard, I heard it's good with The Rock. It's, yes, with The Rock. Yeah. You yeah, I think he's just like because The Rock. Like, no. When she says you're in the, the rock, she's like, the rock. No, he's she, like, rock. I'm like, I'm half Samoan, so it's like, yeah, like, culture, no. you feel me? And right. the rock's like my uncle. She, like, she real knows talk. The, she knows yeah. the theme song of Moana. She's, yeah, she loves Moana. I heard it was really good, though. So, um, guys, if you're, Disney, if you're watching this and you decide to do a little mermaid, we have Sebastian in the building with go. us right now, so. Hey. Make yeah, sure hook him up. <laughs> <laughs> also, you know, Ariana Grande and John Legend, speaking of Disney movies, are redid the Beauty and the Beast song. It used to be done by us. Celine Dion and yes. um, um, Bryce. Yes, P- P- people, people, Bryson. Bryson. Yes, so um, yeah, Ariana Grande and John Legend just remade it. Oh, so what? if you want to listen, just go check it out. Yeah. yeah can you can you say Melvin? Can yeah. I say no? And I told you in my sleep I could sing. I'm, 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 a, I'm a sing. I'm a singer in heart. But God just didn't bless me with the voice. In the shower, I bet you though, yeah. you know. Now, I just, I, I, I'll there. be singing and and yeah, I'll do the karaoke. Go to song like if you uh, yeah. could sing to karaoke, you had to. Enter the uh, down a bit of knees and enter the road. <gasps> down a bit of knees and enter the road. 
We gotta go to karaoke one time. Oh, dang, I'm in your knees. That's like, that's my song. It's not a game. Listen, I mean, I can sing, but I have the whole the whole showmanship of it. They be like, oh, yeah, just give this, whatever. Like, I don't even care about I can't sing anymore. They like, this dude, is, he has it. Entertaining to watch. I'll, I'll be lip singing, like, just lip singing. <laughs> and she low key probably wanted to be in the new edition cast. Yeah. Like, you oh, yeah. wanted to be one of them, yeah. huh? I'd have been like, you should have just yeah. sold the show. I know. I wanted to. I wanted to perform. I was mad they didn't have Curtis Book perform. I was like, come on, man. <laughs> I know. If I rule the world, I'd be the king on throw. See, I'm just like, spot. Right. They should have. They need to have you on lip sync battle then. Yeah. Oh, that'd be I've been funny. through. I got a holla at LL. I was like, "What's up, man? Can I get yeah. on?" Yeah. You can get on lip sync battle, so you don't have to really make it happen. But you see? just you gonna you make know? it happen. See, you, you know people. Y'all know people, so they make that happen. Okay. You know? Okay. Lip sync battle. battle. We got somebody here too. So I'll make <laughs> yeah. it happen next. Because <laughs> I did. I did one too. I did a lip sync uh, challenge to friends, and I uh, I did a uh, uh, one twelve song. Which uh, one? Uh, I'm not. I'm a player. You remember that song? I'm a player. Sing it. Uh, uh, now you got me singing. I'm like, sing it. I'm like, sing it. No, I, I can't. I'm not gonna, you guys gonna embarrass me on here. No. Now it's like, I'm a player. No. I, I wish, I, I, I really need to know. Um, I'm not trying to lock you down, but I, when I'm not, I'm not trying to lock you down until I'm ready. Right now, I just need time to grow. Come on, you gotta sing it. I know. Oh, nah, he hits high notes. Dan hits some high notes and stuff. I got. Mm. Listen, I was, I, could, I was on a roll too. If, if I, I could sing, sing I would my, uh, listen, if I could sing, I, I man. Okay. I'm See. just not gonna embarrass myself. Not yeah. this time. Next time we have him on the show, don't be okay. okay. I'm sing it. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna have Luke James nah. here. He's gonna sing behind me. Oh, oh yeah. God. Next or nah. nah. Speaking of next or nah, um, our next or nah segment. I don't know if anybody has seen it, but it's a video that has gone viral. It's hashtag hurt bay. Mm. So if you guys don't know what it is, basically this couple uh, sat down together. They had. They were actually. They're not even a couple. They were a couple mm. previously. Um, they got together to talk about. About what went wrong in their relationship mm. uh, clearly infidelity was one of the things that uh, <laughs> went wrong but here's a clip we're gonna show right now what did you do? I did everything like what I had sex with other girls I did everything mm, mm, mm. Mm. look at that pain look at that pain mm. she's so pretty uh uh, see. <sighs> so yes, basically the entire video yeah. is we just school, them talking about, um, you know, class, how they got together and, and everything that happened. Like so I wanna know, guys, what do you think? Should couples come together and figure out or ex couples come back together, see what we're in wrong relationship right Most now? Times Melvin, I'm gonna have Melvin, you go first. <laughs> you know, oh, we can get a better understanding to get closure, yeah. you know. Is that the next thing? Do you are you familiar with this video? I, I've heard about it but I haven't seen it. That was the first time I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. What well, do you think? I mean, I, I think most times people know why their relationship yeah. doesn't work out. <clears throat> I think if, if you're doing something for closure, then cool. I mean, they may have done it for that reason, but, like, I don't advise people to broadcast this, like, whatever they want to. Mm -hmm. Like, I think it should be dealt with. Privately. But I think that most times, whether it's the men or the women, like, you should just own up to what you did, apologize, so that person can move on. Because sometimes, you know, women will go through the hurt to where they're not able to heal from it because they mm. feel like, well, was it me? What did I do? And sometimes it's not the woman. It's the men, or it, it could not be the man. It could be the woman. And you just have to have that, that closure to where, like, you're like, yeah, I, I was just not in the right place. You know, no excuses. I did you wrong. I apologize. You know, will you forgive me? And asking that alone will be able to help her mend yes. and be able to love again because it's like once you've been hurt it's like I ain't trusting no other dude <laughs> right. all dudes are like and now you end up messing up for the next person who the dude may be straight yep. but now because of your hurt situation yeah. your situation now he, you checking his phone he ain't doing nothing mm -hmm. You yeah. know, now you you make fun about surprise he had for you because you didn't really <laughs> shit and took his phone. Gotta you know? let that hurt go, right. baby girl. I gotta let it go. <laughs> Raina. What was, well, I'm trying to figure out, like, what was this? Was this a study or is this, like, a series? Like, what, why it did they? It was, she wanted to uh, sit down and. Oh, she wanted to do all this <clears throat> publicly. Yes. Mm. And sat him down and they. And they just recorded and then shared and went viral. And now yeah. she's they, she's hashtag. We people don't even know her name. She's just not known as her bae. Her bae. Oh, wow. But I, isn't it from what I read, doing, she's the one who doing a show or something. I heard something's coming out of it. Like I don't know if somebody reached out to her about. Well, I mean, this is Oprah, interesting Oprah though. Somebody, or? Pro probably, probably because is social media Get the Oprah coins, girl. is just getting people <laughs> hype, fa hype, yeah. famous <laughs> off of this. Like we talked about last week, we talked about the Cash Me Outside girl. She has. She is. She, she got a publicist. A publicist. Everything. I heard somebody say something, but. 
but I don't know what that's about. But she, basically, she was on Dr. Phil, and she was just like, catch me outside. How about that? <laughs> she was basically yeah, she was popping just went viral. The, the audience, uh, yeah. And, and she's just all over thing. the place. And, and then this one, um, Hurt Bay, um, she's all over the internet as well. And I'm, you said that she has different appearances, right? Or what Who? is she? Hurt Bay? What's going on with Hurt Bay? I don't know. Hurt Bay is just trending. People, oh, even she's I, trending. I, okay. I, even um, <laughs> I was on Twitter yesterday, and it was, I think, the, what's trending was Boot Bay. And somebody had wrote, <laughs> it was like some boot company, and they're like, uh, you know, this is the shoe that won't cheat on you. Like, Boot Bay won't cheat on you. Oh, my God. So, you know, like, companies are picking it up. Everybody's, like, going on with these trends, and it's just, you know, becoming bigger and bigger. Well, I mean, personally, I think this is I, I'm more private, so I wouldn't yeah. put in anything like this, especially if I was cheated on by somebody. Like, you right. know, it's rather keep it to each other. I wouldn't broadcast this. Yeah, you I'm not letting nobody yeah, know that they like, cheated on me. If you guys were like, in a relationship. Girl, no, I ended things because <laughs> I just wasn't <laughs> into it anymore. Out. Things just didn't work out. <laughs> Question for both of you. So if you guys were in a relationship, uh-huh. um, how, pu- how how much is too much for you to post on social media about your relationship? Everything. Just kidding. I don't, I don't like posting like too. I don't. You, all you'll get is a picture that maybe we're together. And then if we're not, then the picture might not be on the page no more. And that's kind of all you get. I hate when I go on to social media and I be seeing people who are in relationships write these long paragraph posts. I'm like trying to scroll just to <laughs> go down my timeline about what have happened, what were wrong. I'm like. I don't really need to know this much, but right. not just me. What about you, yeah, I think me and your personal issues that you're going through, like you shouldn't definitely post about <laughs> it. Um, sometimes, like people, you will use social media as their like their therapy session, mm-hmm. and you know we we will get caught up in it and we'll we'll feed into it and we're like, wait a minute, we're doing we're giving too much. People don't need to know about this. It's, it's different when you're in the in the public's eye and it's already like you really don't have that much privacy. Um, so it's kind of like you got to just be careful what you put out there because mm-hmm. you will feel like that's your venting period or your venting area you go to, but you still got to be like, just talk to your friends if yes. you need to really vent. But sometimes people are like, well, now nah, I got to vent on social media. I got to tell the whole world. And it's mm-hmm. like you don't have to because you can't get that back once you put it out there sometimes. And you may, like, you be like, oh, he did this, 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 that, or mm-hmm. she did this, this, that. And then y'all cool again now, but you didn't, it made her or him mm-hmm. look like a yeah. jerk. And now you got to... We, we, we backtrack. It's so. crazy to see, too, that some celebrities are, you know, loving to vent what they feel. Like, they're the type of people that do let so many people know, like, what's going on or how they feel about certain things to the point where it's like, do I really need to know Like Chris Brown much? and Karuchi? Uh, yeah, 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 perfect, the, you know? It, I heard there's something about that, like... She posted, he posted, you know, she um, hit him with a restraining order. Well, and, um, yeah, just... <sighs> pretty bad for Chris Brown right now. I mean, he does have a tour coming up, but I mean... I will always love Chris Brown. I, lo- I always love Chris Brown as, as an artist, but I I hate when I be seeing him in the public eye because I'm like, I think 2005 Chris Brown. I can't believe 2005 Chris Brown is 2017 yeah, Chris Brown. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's interesting. You know, I think people have... You have to choose who you have in your circle, and that's why for me... Um, I definitely try to make sure that I, you know, who else in my circle are, are not yes men. They're hum- me. It's to keep right. me humble. You know, mm. because it's like you'll get to a point to where you'll reach a certain peak in your career, and you and you'll get let it get to your head, mm. and you really can't. I'm not saying that that's what he's doing. I just think that a lot of celebrities in general they just forget that they are in the public eye, and they can't do certain things that you may would do if you weren't in the public yeah. eye. And you know, it's it definitely a difference with the Chris Brown. I've uh, I met you many years ago to who he is now, and he grew up in this business, so it's hard for a kid, you know. Yes, he, definitely. He's just now trying to live his life and not being judged. But unfortunately, you are a celebrity, so you're always going to be, be judged, judged, no matter of your past, because he can have done whatever he did, but then somebody else of another color have done what they did, and they're not judged for it on a consistent basis. But yeah. he is, because he's an African-American entertainer, and that's just... That's so true. I, um, Childish Gambino uh, and his team who do FX, uh, they played on this um, same uh, idea with uh, Atlanta. Yeah, the with, Justin Bieber thing. Yeah, yeah, the Justin Bieber. It was like Nobody Beats the Biebs episode where they had uh, an actor who played Justin Bieber, but he was black, or supposed to be Justin Bieber, but he was black, and he was doing all the things that Justin Bieber has done in the public eye. And he was forgiven though on the show. Like he did all these crazy things, but everybody was like, yeah, he apologized. Oh, he apologized. Like, oh, oh, yeah, he and was, it was so okay. sweet. Oh. But he was black, so I, people were, you know, thinking, well, maybe this is just trying to tell let us know, like, okay, what if 
Justin Bieber was black? Will we be so forgiving to the Justin Bieber that we see now mm. that can just apologize so quick and be forgiven? So it's crazy That's when you think of it like that. Yeah. yeah. Has, was there a certain time in your life where you instantly decided to be private? Like, have you went through something that if you might have outed it in, on social media or through a conversation with people you don't know where you just like, okay, I messed up, I need to be private now? Or have you always just been a private type of person? I mean, certain things you just have to be private about. But I think, like, you know, I've been more transparent in the past couple of years. Like, you know, like my father, um, not to bring us to the sad uh, uh, sad place, but uh, three years ago my father committed suicide, and that was really hard for me so to talk about. about um, but I felt like it was necessary to let people know, like, this is what happens, and this is how I got through it. And it was definitely the support of my friends. Like, my friends came to my aid. Like, they were like my lifesavers and in life you're gonna go through certain things and it's all about how you get up from those situations mm. and I could have kept that to myself but it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been a healing situation for me it would, so me talking about it and telling other people about it was more therapeutic And but they also saw that he is human and you never know who's going through the situation mm, and true. people are maybe not as strong as I was or didn't have this support system that I did so you never know what they may have went through so I definitely now am a little bit open about more things than I would be but it's still mm. certain things you gotta be private about but like like you talked about as far as going through the financial situation with the job and everything like that like I would have been private about that years before but, but no. being transparent has helped a lot of other people that get through that situation because they're like oh okay he's gone through it okay I don't have to be this person that just now leave my job and now not have anything to fall back on I'm, and like people hear me like I'm going through the same thing or I've gone through it and I thank you for that because it wasn't about me it was about making sure that I let other people know that you can survive from situations you've gone through and you don't have to jump off the ledge or or, or go out there and, and fall short of your what you could be great at so you use your social media not to rant or to vent, but to just be life lessons to other people who, you know, might right. be going through the same yeah, thing. Yeah, my goal That's is to great. be a blessing to others, and whether it's by, you know, using my pain to, to bless, to help heal somebody else, that's mm -hmm. that's important. Um, and so it's just been great to just the feedback and, you know, even starting to work with different organizations that have been able to deal with um, similar situations that I've wow. even gone through or talked about. What organizations are those? Like I'm, we'll start, I'm starting to start to work with the um, suicide and prevention organization. Mm. Um, so they, they go out and they talk to um, different people that have uh, going think about suicide or um, suicide or who's who's had a family member that has gone through it. And so it's just important to make sure that something that is <clears throat> important to me that I make sure that I share my story with other people. That's because right. if you're not able to help anybody, being an entertainer or being just a celebrity is not the ideal thing for me. Like, I, I want to make sure that I make a difference in this world. And it's if being you using the TV and film as my foundational platform to do that, then that's great. But I don't want that to all that people see, oh, he's a great actor. Okay, that's cool. But I want to be a great person, a great leader, a great uh, mentor, someone that can you can have your kids look up to and be like, oh, okay, you, you can not be like me, but but go in that direction of being better. You mm -hmm. know, it's always people like, I want to be like Michael Jordan. There's already a Michael Jordan. Right. Be like yourself would be better. That is... Yes, Melvin. Yes. Just dropping, just dropping, <laughs> just dropping knowledge gyms. tonight. Yes. I try, I try. Jeez, man. Any mamas watching tonight, they're like, I want you to be like Serious. Melvin. Like, my, like MJ. <laughs> like MJ. <laughs> MJ. <laughs> On TV. The new MJ over man. here, okay? Well, I mean, geez, that was our show. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> freaking time like flies by. Time with does fly us. by. Oh my god, like, I can't believe it. Seriously, yeah. um, but I'm so happy we were able to sit yes, in with you, you. Uh, to learn about your career and all of you know your inspirational stories. That's awesome. We learned a lot about the acting industry as well. So, and we can't wait to so see the upcoming projects too. Yeah. So definitely, yeah. Guys, and please, oh, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, yeah, and please like let us know one more time the uh, the upcoming project so people can keep an eye out. I'm um, um, finishing up a, my faith-based film called The Price of Fame that I wrote, directed, um, and produced, and I'm in as well. And okay. I'm going to be playing Corrupt in the DP for G Life. I G, can't DP wait. for G, DP for... <laughs> Dog Pal. Dog Pal for Life, life. sorry, yeah. <laughs> uh, Are, movie, hey, movie. I have to ask you. My song from Corrupt is, We can freak yeah. it. <laughs> freak, freak if you, you want, want to. <laughs> Yes. Oh, the corruption, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that song. Okay, so when you said corrupt, I was like, 
<laughs> yeah, so yeah, he was it. the one that Can't actually wait. picked me to, to play him. I did a I can no, I uh, see it. I yeah. see you, and I see when you said it. I was like, dang, he do look like yeah. corrupt. So I can't wait to see that. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, okay. we shot a promo like two years ago, so you know it's, we're getting Ooh, ready to get the t- script so together. Excited. That is so yeah. exciting. So yes, we'll be on the lookout for that, and uh, yeah. Let everybody know where they can find you, too. Melvin Jackson Jr., Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, the brand's real. Yes, and then I am Raylan T. You can find me at Raylan Taren on Instagram and Twitter. And and I'm Raina LA. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Raina underscore LA. Make sure you follow things Black Hollywood Live at BHL online on Instagram and Twitter. And also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tune in with us every Thursday, 6 p.m. on Next with your rays of sunshine. <laughs> See you guys next week. Bye. From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us. Info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio. Instagram me at KingXOBay. Thanks for tuning in. Hollywood Redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.